Good evening guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Sylvia Bichanga. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing. Our channel name is Corey and Sylvia Bichanga. I am actually here on my back deck off my kitchen and there's a reflective window so that's a little weird. But anyway, I wanted to bring you guys along this evening. I am planning to make Corey make him his favorite meal. So I wanted to bring you guys along to the market as I buy some of the supplies that I need. And I'm gonna show you guys the ingredients that I use um, to make it. His favorite meal is fish. So we are gonna go buy a local fish that was caught in Lake Victoria. Um, they sell some for around 200 shillings, which is like $2. Some of them are more $3. I'm thinking I'll buy one for about $3. Um, I might go ahead and buy two and freeze one. So. Anyway, come along as I go to the market and as I make supper for Corey. So I am just walking up to where I'm going to be buying the fish and the sun is just going down and it's nice and cool and yeah, it's rainy season. So as you can see, our road here, <laughs> this is what they call a road. Um, at home I think we'd call it a creek bed. but. When it rains, it really washes out a lot. Um, but hey, it's not as bad as some roads, so you just get used to it. <laughs> I just love this time of day when the sun is going down and everybody kind of comes out and goes to the market and talks to their friends and it's no longer so hot that you can't breathe. Um, yeah, it's a fun part of the day because most people, if they're not working, they just stay inside during the day when it's so hot. So this is the beginning of our local market. Hi, I'm fine. Hello. Hi. How are you guys? Good. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to our home. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Take some tura. Take some tura. Eat some tura. What is it? It's tura. Tura. Yeah. What are the ingredients? The ingredients. Yes. We have some spicy here. Yeah, some, some onions. Oh, there's onions. Yeah, the the juicy of the juicy for for cow. Oh, the bile. Yeah, the bile. Ah, yeah. It's not hot for you. It's hot. My hands are. I just hot for them. Okay. I'm going to go buy fish. So they have some of them that they are already dried. Like this way. These are dried fish. Uh, and also on this other side, they have omena, which are these small ones. Hi, Hi. how are you? And then they have the dried fish. These ones, they're dried, um, they're deep fried. Deep fried, okay. And what is this? Oh, catfish. I've not seen those before. Oh, it's a season for them. They come and go. Okay. Sour. So there's a lady just up here. It's where I got my fish the last time. 
They are making samosas. Jadala, even a day. Oka wono. So, right here are the fish that I usually buy. Hello! Yeah. How are you? So, these are deep fried and these are the fresh ones. So guys, this is the fish that I'm buying. I'm going to buy one fresh fish and uh, one of the deep fried ones, actually this one right here. So this one is 300, this is uh, 150. So she's just removing the scales for me and um, also the intestines. So this is my first time trying to make a fresh fish. Here I go again making food for the first time on YouTube, but I think it will be okay. She always has the best fish. So when you come to Mambaleo, you just look for this place by the roundabout. Yes? It's so good. Yeah. You're also cutting skooma. <laughs> He's helping you. This is your son? Yeah. Okay. Alrighty guys, I am back and I am getting ready to make supper. So here is the already deep fried fish that I got and then I have the ugali flour that I'll be making the ugali with this one and I have garlic my secret is to add a lot of garlic so I have my tomatoes and onions right here and then here I have the skooma wiki it's I'm soaking it in the water to wash it I'll probably only make half of this. Here we have our fish. I actually have never made a fresh fish before. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to try that. All right, all right guys. Here I have the fish soaking in salt water the way they had told me um, that I need to do. And I put out some oil here for frying. And I know it usually splatters a lot with the water, so I just have the lid and this ready and the rest of the food here so I am going to deep fry this one first of all I mean does this sound familiar at all I had said I'm not gonna cook food for the first time again on YouTube but in my defense I have done like one that had been fried um, like this one before so I don't think it'll be too hard so let's get this fish in the oil I am gonna turn on the oil right now fry it I've been looking on this side thinking it's the camera. I need to look on this side. It's complicated, y'all, to make videos. All right, so while this oil is heating up, I am going to make the skooma wiki, which is basically fried kale. One tip that I learned um, from one of my Kenyan friends is that if you want your onions to brown, you should always put your onions in first before the tomatoes. So I like to put my onions and garlic in first 
and I don't necessarily cut them into very small pieces. Um, so I'm going to do some onions and garlic first. Just like that. So this is a very, very traditional um, Kenyan meal for sure. All right, let's see if I can do this. Here we go. Eyeballs and all. Oh dear. It's burning. Um, all right, that was all fun and games until the fish hit the oil. Okay, on to bigger and better things. So, I'm still chopping these up for the um, skooma wiki that I'm making. Sometimes I put tomato in and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just put the, um, just the garlic and the onions in. Um, but definitely adding garlic really adds a nice flavor to it. And it's nice when it's fresh garlic and not just garlic powder. So I'm going to do about three big clumps of garlic like this. So I hope you can hear me over the noise that this fish is making. But I have the garlic and onions brown. And so I'm just going to add the tomatoes. Alrighty, time to check on our little fishy. Ooh la la, hot them. Let me turn this baby over. Alright, come on fishy fishy. It's falling apart. Oh my word. The tail is not bendy. Go in there. Ah! Don't be bitter. All right. Ah! Oh my word. All right, that's enough. He's okay. He, she, I don't know. Whew, that scared me. The neighbors can probably hear me hooping and hollering over here, wondering what's up. I'm just making a fish for the first time, people. That's all. So, just washing the skooma wiki. And then I'm just gonna put it straight from here into the pan over here. I'm telling you what, doing videos um, by yourself, cooking videos, they're a challenge. Alrighty, time to take little brother out and put him here on this tray with big brother. Are you done, buddy? Alright, time to migrate. Okay, I can't with this one. Don't be bitter. Don't pop oil at me, please. I come as a friend. Eek, I'm holding him by his tail. Are you done? I think he's done. Yeah, I think so. All right, here we go. In you go. All right, so we're just finishing up this kale. You can see how when it gets... Um, really bright green that's what you want to have um, and it really shrinks a lot like it feels like you're putting a lot of kale in the pan but then it actually ends up shrinking a ton so this is just oil sauteing onions and garlic adding tomatoes salt and pepper and kale and here you have an African dish called skumawiki. I'm just gonna let this sit in the pan until this water, water type thing you're seeing here is all 
out. Boiled away. All right, so while the kale is over here doing its thing, we're gonna make the tomato, the tomato sauce that we then wanna put the fish into. I'm guessing three onions and about five tomatoes. So I'm just chopping up my um, onions and tomatoes to fry with the fish. So what we're trying to do is we're making um, a tomato onion mixture that will then slow cook the fish in. So it's called Nyanya Marudi, but it's um, basically just a tomato onion mixture where you put the fish in. And if you're from the States and you're thinking getting whole fish is so expensive or I can't buy whole fish, you can absolutely buy the just the fillets and deep fry them. And they'll work the exact same way. Just deep fry the fillets and then make the, like the tomato onion mixture that I'm making right now. Um, and just put the fillets after you fry them, put them in there and you'll have basically the same, the same idea. Now for Africans, they'll tell you it's not the same without the head and the tail and the skin and everything on. And they do have a point, most certainly. But that's the closest you'll get is to have um, just the fillets. All right, so here you can see I um, fried the skumawiki until all the water is out of it and it's um, even just a little bit browned. So here I have um, my three medium onions and I have oil underneath and I'm just going to add some salt. Now, Next I'm going to be putting in the garlic and then the tomatoes, but one ingredient that I'm not using that can also make it taste really good is if you add cilantro to it for my locals, Dania. Um, if you add that to this whole soup mixture that I'm making, that makes it really tasty. All right, we have our onions, garlic, salt, salt and pepper, and generous amount of oil, probably a good one-fourth to a half cup. All right, everything's in. Gonna add a little more salt and pepper. All right, we're just gonna let that cook down and we're gonna add a little bit of water. And we'll come back in a minute and put the fish in there. Okay, now we have this soup, onion, tomato, and garlic. So we have Tom and Jerry here. Have you heard about the Mazungu who tries to cook Kenyan food? Yeah, me, I've heard about them. Can Mazungus really cook Kenyan food? Bye. See you in the next life where fish have a good life. I'm actually going to cut them in half so that they fit into this pan, especially this one is really big. Alright, so I just scooped the tomatoes and onions on top of them and we're just going to let them cook like this for about three minutes. Alright, so these are now done. So I'm just going to turn this off and set it back and I have one more dish to make.
All right, so as you can see, I'm boiling some water here and I'm getting ready to make um, ugali. Okay, so from, for my people back at home, the thing that you can substitute this uh, for is actually yellow cornmeal. If you go to the supermarket or anywhere, yellow cornmeal will replace it. I'm just heating water in a bowl and then I'm gonna show you how to stir um, in the corn flour. Um, but just plain yellow cornmeal will give you almost the same effect. It will taste different, but it's the closest thing you can get to it. For those of you who live in my former community, there's a bulk food store there called The Home Place. They sell the real ugali flour, corn flour, the white one, and it tastes just exactly the same. So if you're in that area, it's in Southern Ohio, um, Georgetown, um, if you're ever in that area, for sure stop in and get some of that corn flour so you can make this whole meal with the food that you have in the States. All right, just excuse this whole mess here. I have a small kitchen, so we are working with what we got. So I'm gonna let this water come to a rolling boil before I add any flour. That's a very important step. All right guys, so the water is boiling um, and I usually like to stir it with a wooden spoon. I don't know why, it just works better. So we're gonna start adding the ugali flour and letting it boil. So we're going for um, kind of a corn mush thickness. If you know, if you're from the south and you've had corn mush before, that's the consistency we're going for. Ouch, it's already starting to bubble. And it, when it does that, it can get painful. When that stuff touches your skin, it's not a laughing matter. Alright, so you can see the way the bottom of this looks like. It's browned and it just gives that extra flavor to the ugali. So now it's done. So I like to put it out in another bowl. And because this is really hard to clean, I like to put water, I like to put water in it right away while it's still hot. Press this down. And you don't have to do this step. You can eat it how it is, but I like it this way. And obviously this is this is a lot for us. There'll probably be a little bit left over. So for a big crowd, you want to make a big, so you just flip it out like that. And there you have your ugali. And then we often will cut it 
into pieces, kind of like a cake, cutting it like this. But yeah, that's it. So here we have the finished product. This is the skumawiki or the fried kale. Here we have our fish. And here we have our ugali. So this is a full meal. Sometimes they would still slice tomato and onion and have it fresh like a salsa with cilantro in it. Um, but this is pretty much a full meal right here. So you're going to show the people how to eat it the African way without any silverware. Yeah, this is silverware. Silver. <laughs> yeah, this is my spoon for tonight. So, um, yeah. First you take the ugali. No, you don't lick first. You just take the ugali. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I usually prefer going for the kels or the skuma wiki. How is it? Wow. <laughs> and the ugali, can you rate it mm -hmm. one out of ten today and be honest even if you're on camera, I won't Seven. mind. Seven. <laughs> I'm at a seven, guys. You've really stuck on seven. So what can make it come to a ten? That will... Uh, I think you need to look for a... Um, you need to go to the village. And they'll teach you how to make it so nicely. It doesn't have enough flowers, India. Um, just a bit. But not enough. Wow. Aha! This is my favorite part of it. The fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's enjoying, guys. And you need to be careful with the fish. It has a lot of bones, so for me, I know where the the meat are and where, and where the, flesh, the bones are. But sometimes people can get bones stuck in their throat. I can assure there's no any bone here. And it's so hot. Ah. So guys, this is the Kenyan meal I made. My hubby's favorite meal. He's always happy and comes home early when he hears this meal is in the making. <laughs> Talk. See you. <laughs> He's out. Peace. All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming along today, going to the market and making my husband's favorite meal. So thanks, guys. I hope you guys learned something today. And I hope to see in the comment section how you guys will plan to make this or at least will try to make it. If you know me on Instagram, take a picture and tag me in it. Um, and let me know if you guys are going to try making this African dish. Thanks again. If you like this kind of videos, please subscribe to our channel. Like this video and leave a comment. It really boosts my channel and puts my videos out there on new people's pages. We love you guys. We thank you for all your love and support. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.